joined now by Ruth Jewell, a junior commander with the ATS uh, during the Second World War, and Brigadier Shirley Neal, director of the present-day Women's Royal Army Corps. Good morning to you, both of you ladies. Um, Brigadier, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll defer to your uh, great rank and start with uh, Ruth's story. If you don't mind. Please. Ruth, um, it's true to say, isn't it, that not only were women heavily involved in the war, but actually some of them were pushed right into the front lines and in positions of great danger, weren't they? That's right. When we, uh, we were in Brussels, where we went in December 1944, and at one time there was nothing much between us and von Rundstedt when he was in the Ardennes. And they did start to have, um, get arrangements for us to be um, sent back, mm. but then uh, he was pushed back. Yes. And so we stayed where we were. I mean, the interesting thing is, comparing the Allies and, and the German forces, the uh, armaments minister, Albert Speer, said, didn't he, that uh, they could never get their women into the services in the way that the British and the Allies could. That's right. And in fact, uh, there was great enjoyment when Monty and 21st Army Group mm. asked if a mixed regiment would go abroad. Mm. And m we, the women, didn't have to go. They could volunteer. Mm. And not one of the people who were asked to go said no. They were thrilled to go. It's a remarkable effort, and again, perhaps another of the forgotten theatres of, of the war. Now, just to emphasise that you actually worked in a, in a, a real front-line situation. This is one of the empty casings uh, from the ACAC shells, That's right. which you used, and you fired down uh, your unit shot down several aircraft, didn't it? That's right. It's, you know, I mean, it's a long time ago, and I don't remember how many, mm. but certainly that was one we shot down in Brussels, and I brought it back on the aeroplane with I me. hope you didn't have to lift these, because the empty it, shells is heavy It's heavy. No, we didn't... It, the one job the women didn't do mm. was fire the guns. We had four heavy air cat guns. Yes. And the one thing they didn't do was fire. The men did that. But, but you were in charge did. of spotting, sighting, That's and so right. on. That's right. Radio yes. location, everything like mm. that. When you look uh, back at the, the past, Ruth, we, we mentioned, didn't we, in the introduction, um, about the fight to gain recognition. Well, from what you've been telling us, clearly that fight was won even during the early stages of the war. Oh, yes, because when we first went, you see, I was, I joined up in Feb 39, and when we first went out to camp, uh, the uniform was very nasty in those days, <laughs> and we were really figures of fun, because they'd never seen women in uniform When you say that the, the uniform well, was nasty, was, in what way was it nasty? terrible khaki overall, <laughs> excuse my sake. Uh, and a very nasty khaki overall, and we really looked not very smart, but then they gave us quite nice, you know, um, fairly thick shirts well, and such like. But uh, they weren't used to seeing women in uniform. Well, you've, you've neatly allowed us to introduce uh, Brigadier Shirley Neals, and Brigadier, first of all, uh, perhaps a comment on the uniform. They certainly have smartened up and made a, a lot more comfortable, I'd imagine. Yes, I, I think we've improved it mm. a great deal, yes, mm. with the help of all sorts of people, including Norman Hartnell and, uh, and Worth. So we've had big designers. The in top the designers are brought in. Absolutely. Yeah, Worth a... designed our mess kit, mm. and uh, Norman Hartnell designed our number one dress, which mm. is dark green. And, mm. yes. Now, of course, in a sense, because we're talking matters military, um, it would be assumed, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, that because of perhaps their nature uh, and the way they're made, that women would take a back seat. But you clearly have inherited from Ruth and Ruth Kine, mm. a marvellous tradition. Oh, they're tremendous. I think it's absolutely wonderful what they did during the war. And had they not done that, uh, then I believe what wouldn't have happened is what happened in 1949, which was instead of women coming in just when they're required and then disbanded, and come in and be disbanded as we were in the First World War, Second World War, uh, they had achieved so much uh, in the Second World War that it was decided to set up a permanent corps Mm. So the Women's Royal Army Corps became the inheritors of the ATS mm. uh, and a regular corps of the British Army. So we're just as much part of the British Army as any other regiment or corps. And we're very proud indeed at that time to take aboard uh, the royal title. Yes, indeed. Uh, so. what it, for young women or young girls, in fact, mm. watching this, what, would, what are the options open to them nowadays? Is it, is it a force with many more career decisions that can be made? 
Indeed, choices. I think well, the things that have changed enormously, really, um, um, since 1949, since we were set up as a regular corps, was that uh, people could make a full career. Mm. And it means that the professional training, which is available to so many uh, in the army, going to staff college, Royal College of Defence Studies, uh, and indeed the training at Sandhurst for, the, for our officer cadets, all uh, uh, now are being open to women. Mm. And consequently, they're in a much better position to compete equally uh, with their male counterparts for promotion, for appointment, mm. uh, and so on. Yes, I'd like uh, both of you to, to answer one, for one thing finally. I, it, it could be said, I suppose, that there's a contradiction here, isn't there? That women, we always assume, are the more pacifist uh, the sex. They're the gentler sex, we're told. Is there a contradiction uh, between serving in a military area and being a passenger? I don't think so at all. I think we, we perform the, the complementary functions within the military that we perform as women in society as a whole. Uh, I'll give you an example. I have a corporal, for instance, talking of the Fort Falklands conflict. I have a corporal who works at the Central Ammunition Depot uh, who is perfectly convinced that that war could not have continued had she not been there outloading the ammunition. Mm. Uh, yes. And, of course, she's absolutely right. So this sort of support function of supply, communications, intelligence, mm. driving, transport. We do all of that and we do it worldwide. Well, Brigadier Shirley Neal, thanks for telling us about the President. Mm -hmm. I can't resist uh, saying goodbye to Ruth Jaw without mm -hmm. uh, adding the little note that when you got back from the Second War, World War and met your husband again, yes. he was more than a bit peeved, wasn't he? Because you were a captain, but he'd only made lieutenant. That's right. He was absolutely miffed absolutely about right. that. And that well, still happens. Yeah, that still happens. Does it? Well, that's yes. another interesting topic yes. which we yes. might meet <laughs> in another day. Thanks for telling yes. us your story. But